In this lesson, you calculate the speed of sound in the air using FET sound wave simulation. For lesson objectives, we have basically three. One is a brief review of sound waves. The second one, and is the core of this lesson, is how explain how to use FET sound wave simulation. And at the end, I will explain how to complete a lab assignment. So let's review. So this is a speaker and this is a listener. And this is the median between the speaker and the listener. This is a particle of the median. And this is the direction of propagation of the wave. So even though the sound from the speaker to the listener is going to move from left to right, the particles, there is part, the particle in the median is going to be moving back and forth. So that's why sound wave is considered a longitudinal wave, which means that particles in the median vibrate parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. In this simulation, you observe the particles do not propagate with the wave, but they are energy carriers. Also, sound waves are mechanical waves. A wave requiring physical medium for waves should travel through, like gas, liquid, or solid. For each type of medium, particles are closer to each other than others. The speed of sound for solids is faster than for gas. In this simulation, sound waves will propagate through air particles. We can observe two distinguished areas in this medium. One with a concentration with a loss of particles and another area with less particles. So the area with a loss of particles we call compression. So there are areas with high pressure. And another one is with less particle particles is called rarefaction, which is air, there are areas with low pressure. A wavelength can be measured between two consecutive um, compression areas and they also between two rarefaction areas I can measure wavelength. However, it's kind of difficult to determine the beginning and end of a wavelength using a longitudinal wave form. So we are going to translate to a transverse wave because it's easier to observe the features of a wave, the period, amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. In this lesson, I use FAT sound wave intro simulation to explain how sound is produced. I use the provided tools in the simulation to measure wavelength and period. I will calculate frequency and speed of a sound wave. And I will compare the speed of sound from this simulation with the real speed of sound waves in the air, which is approximately 343 meters per second. Then, by the end of this video, I will explain how to complete your lab assignment. This is FET Interactive Simulation from the University of Colorado. I'm going to explain how to use waves intro simulation for sound. On the left side of this screen, you can see a speaker and two sources of waves. One is single pulse. And another one for a flow of waves. You can control the speed of this wave by clicking on slow. You can stop. And you can use time frame to select a particular section that you need to measure. I'm going to quickly explain the right tabs and with more details as we use them throughout this video. For measuring tools, we have tape measure. 
we have a timer in milliseconds. One milliseconds is 10 to the minus three seconds. We have a wave display with on x-axis time in milliseconds and y-axis pressure or amplitude or energy. We have these control tabs to change frequency and amplitude. And we can select a graph to measure wavelength and see the behavior of the wave. We can also play a tone for different frequencies. We can observe this wave as a waveform, particles, or both. So let's refresh to understand uh, what this gray area is about. So this gray area represents the median in front of the sound speaker, where we are going to observe how the wave propagates. Let's start by understanding this, this grid dimension. So let me bring the tape measure aligned here and slide and measure the length of this grid. It is about 500 centimeters. So if you have one section of 50 centimeters, so we have 10 sections of 50 centimeters. Now let's visualize a sound wave produced by this speaker. So let's select particles. As you see, the particles are already in motion. And let's keep the frequency and amplitude settings as it is. Let's make sure it is normal uh, speed. And let's click on the speaker and observe how these particles respond with the vibration of the speaker. So the speaker cone diaphragm, the yellow membrane, vibrates back and forth. And by doing this, it disturbs the particles in front of it. So let's select a slow motion to observe with more details. As the diaphragm moves forward, the particles are pushed into each other. As the diaphragm moves backwards, it pulls the particles back. One interesting situation is the sound waves are moving in one direction, in this case from left to right. To see better, let's select both. So if I follow one circle, is moving in one direction from left to right. So that's the speed of the sound waves. My question is, are these particles moving with the wave propagation? So to answer this question, let's observe these red dots. They are visual cues to show how the particles are moving. In this case, Looks like it's back and forth. But to prove this, we are going to bring this tape measure, this light, and try to get a sweet spot here where we can see um, one, two, three, four, five, six red dots. So these red dots are moving back and forth following the speaker vibration is that even though the sound wave is propagating from left to right for longer distances, the molecular movement is radically smaller. If we slide this line to compare how far the red dots vibrate back and forth, we can observe that closer the speaker to the speaker, uh, these particles move more far away from this line than away from the speaker.
This is because the particles closer to the speaker receives more energy than those away from the speaker. So where this energy comes from? So all these particles, they are energy carriers. So they are carrying the energy from the speaker to the adjacent particles. To measure this, let's bring the uh, wave display and place the sensor on two different spots, one closer to the speaker and one away from the speaker. So you can see clearly that the light gray sensor has a higher energy than the darker gray sensor when both ways are playing the same display. Okay, so now we notice two defined areas, regions um, on this grid. One with more particles and one with less particles. The terms used for the region with higher number of particles is compression, and the term used for the lower number of particles is rarefaction. So let's select just waveform and use the frequency and amplitude tab to observe to visualize how um, the wave propagates in this medium. So let's select lower frequency or closer to the minimum. So as you see, the wave length get wider, it's getting wider. Um, and if you slide to the maximum, closer to the maximum frequency, the wavelength get smaller. So there is a inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. So if the frequency is higher, the wavelength is shorter. If the frequency is less, the wavelength is wider. So to observe the amplitude is we slide for lower amplitude. So you can see those bright circles, they kind of fade away. It's because Amplitude is related to the height of a wave or energy. So now we have less height, so it's less noticeable. If we add more amplitude or more height, so you can see brighter um, circular areas. To calculate the speed of a sound wave, we need two factors. One is the wavelength of the wave, and the other one is the frequency of this wave. So we are going to select um, both and we are going for these settings of frequency and amplitude. We are going to create, to make this speaker vibrate and create sound waves. And we are going to calculate the speed of the sound. To do that, we're gonna bring the graph and we are going to measure the wavelength of this wave. So we're gonna stop and we are gonna bring the tape measure. So let me catch a wave. Let me go slow, maybe right here. So here we have a crest and now I need to identify the next crest which is about here, it's fine. So this is the wavelength of this wave in centimeters. So in meter will be, um, let me, in meter will be, so 103.3 divided by 100. So it's 1.033 meter. So that is our um, wavelength. Now we need to find the frequency. To find the frequency, we need to bring this wave display and I'm going to place one of those sensor by, let's say right here. And uh, I'm going to find the period of this wave. So let's stop. And here we have 
Um, this is a crest, this is a crest, and we have three boxes. So the period of this wave is three times one milliseconds. So if period is three times a milliseconds is 0 0.001. I don't have a scientific calculator here. So that is our period is 0 0.033 seconds. So I need the frequency. So I know that the frequency is the inverse of the period. So I'm going to use this tab, this key and inverse. That is my frequency, 333.33 Hertz. So times the wavelength, which is 1.033 is 344. So our the speed of this wave is 344 meters per second. For this frequency setting, the speed of sound wave is determined by measuring wavelength and period of the wave traveling in this medium. Wavelength is converted to meter. Period is converted from milliseconds to seconds. Frequency can be calculated by uh, inverting the period since they are reciprocals. So the results, the result is 333 Hertz. And finally, the speed of sound can be calculated by the product of the wavelength times frequency. And the result here is 344 meters per second. As for your lab, you have, you have to follow the same steps presented in this video to calculate the speed of sound for each of these frequencies. You have to adjust the frequency shown for each of this picture and record your results in this table. For the setting tree, this is the one I have used as an example in this video and the results are already filled in this table for you.